Fear the Walking Dead Season 2 Episode 10, Do Not Disturb. I gotta admit, I really love the ending to this episode. I liked everything leading up to it, but the ending just kind of blew me away. I was like, at, by the time we ended this episode, I was like, there is no way in the world that we could possibly have this kid in the show as a main character. Unless he ends up being like one of the villains later on, because he was doing some Shane type stuff in this where... You know, and even in the first half of this season where, you know, when they first get on land and he's just standing around because he was mad um, at Alicia. So he's basically just watching like I was going to let her die. And then he was, I assume, uh, going to kill her and Madison or one of them, at least, uh, when they were asleep in the room. So well, it was crazy enough then. And now he's saying all this stuff that's almost the exact opposite, where he's like, you know, we need people and stuff. And when he, as soon as he started saying that, I was like, they already had that stuff. And then that's exactly what Travis said. He's like, you know, we had that. And then, and I believe his, the son's name is Chris. I, honestly, I always forget his name. But he's like, you know, but they looked at me different. I was like, yeah, when you, when you, when someone wakes up at random and then it's like, what are you, why are you in the room with the knife? you're going to get looked at really, really weird. Or when you just stand around and someone's about to get eaten and you're just like, mm, it's going to be weird. It's going to look freaking weird. So he, I don't know what his deal is. He's going crazy. He's clearly um, an a-hole at this point. Like I kind of just hate him now based on what he did at the end of the episode because he was already weird. It was, it was already an issue where his father's trying to basically keep him sane. And he's like, I have to, you know, of course, protect my son. But... Clearly, he's lost his effing mind, so we can't just, I can't take him back. He wouldn't go back anyway, so that's why I'm with him, and we're traveling. And it's just crazy. I mean, we have Travis and Chris, and even, you know, even from the beginning, Travis was the one where it was like, you know, he wouldn't kill and stuff like that. That was his big thing. He didn't want to kill, you know, any of the zombies or anything like that, or walkers or the, the wasted, as they introduced in this episode. And... You know, that changed a little bit as things went on where, you know, sometimes you just got to do what you got to do. But as they say in this episode, those random guys, you know, they call him Killer Chris. He just goes crazy. Like, he just does it. And then I guess it makes sense. It was almost like some serial killer stuff where he started off simple because, you know, of course he was doing stuff to defend himself and things like that. And... You know, that would be, like, the equivalent to, like, killing animals. And then he kind of upgraded and stuff. And that's what it was like to me. And I was like, this is really crazy. Like, I know in those situations where he was defending himself, he still kind of went for it. Because he could have... There are a lot of situations where he could have avoided it. But it was something he enjoyed. And it was just kind of what he really wanted to do, almost. So it was just really crazy. And then he, you know, meets up with these people who are clearly uh, at least akin to him. And, you know, they, they kind of bond and they have their jokes and stuff. And they're all um, at least close, you know, close in age. So, you know, he ends up bonding with them. And Travis is like, all right, I don't like these people. I think they're dangerous. And, of course, Chris is like, you know, he's so, you know, so he finds people that don't mind killing, you know, zombies like him. And it's different. And I, I wish I could remember what made him lose his mind to begin with, um, to where he let, or he was gonna let Alicia just be eaten, because I, I really can't remember, it was some petty argument, if I remember, it was something really simple, I think, and that's what led to that, and then it just escalated where, you know, she called him out on, like, him just watching, and then he got pissed off at her, he, like, shoved her against the wall, and then it made things even worse, and then, of course, you know, him being in the room in the middle of the night with a knife, crazy, so just his story and Travis just watching Travis is so sad because I'm like man he might have, he's either gonna have to ditch his son or he might have to like kill his son or something crazy I don't know because these people I, I mean they're not really that much of an influence on him clearly he had some issues beforehand but then he instantly bonded with them because they're like oh you know killing you know off the zombies and crap and that dude was clearly crazy as well um where he's like you know hey we're no bills and this and that and when people say that and this is funny because i watch um the show the strain which is kind of similar they're you know vampires instead of zombies there was a character that said the same thing i'm like these people are dumb they're like you know rich people and poor people are living together it's like that everybody's getting eaten by each other like you get cut or scratched and then you end up eating your cousin something crazy like that's not living this is insanity and then just like you know no speed limits or cops it's like i can i can kind of deal with that you know, no speed limits, no cops, no society, 
you know, with all that stuff comes a lot of other great things that aren't there anymore, like cable and television and internet. But it's like, you know, no cops and no speed limits and I don't know, I guess we randomly run around hungry and thirsty. That's fantastic, though. Which, you know, it's very obvious that they were a-holes anyway, because they killed the couple, the old couple. Like, as soon as they're introduced, it's like, all right, I don't like these people, because instead of even robbing them, they chose to flat-out murder, you know, this couple. And Chris saw that, and, you know, he ends up escaping and stuff, and then they end up bonding. So... They're crazy, too. You know, they're crazy, he's crazy, and I just don't know how this is going to play out, if I'm being 100% honest, but I am excited to see it. I mean, you know, the guy comes in, and initially, I thought he was going to be, you know, a zombie, like something would happen, because uh, right before the guy came in the door, one of the guys, like, fell when he was catching one of the chickens. I thought, like, the father would be, like, dead, like something happened, maybe he killed himself or something like that, and um, he would just be, like in the barn somewhere and he'd actually like crawl out and like bite the guy on the arm or something that's what i thought was gonna happen and then it turned out that he was actually alive so that was pretty crazy you know just the way they ended that and like the guy i don't know what this guy was freaking thinking like th i just kind of hate this little group in general but they're arguing with this dude they're in his house of course and they're like you know well we want to be here so f him and the one dude i kind of like the guy for this um the the father i kind of liked him for this but the guy like kills one of his chickens and he shoots him in the leg i was like that was actually really cool it was really dangerous and ultimately that's what led to him being shot anyway but it was pretty crazy i, I kind of like that scene though. i was like yeah you know he did he definitely deserved that because he escalated the situation literally for no good reason because he just was being a dick and was like i'm just gonna snap this chicken's neck just because and he got what he deserved but unfortunately you know that led to the father being killed so i don't know what travis is going to do um i'm excited to check out the next episode for sure but i love the way it ended i like the other story as well but of course this was like the highlight for me like watching the continuation of travis basically trying to help his son who's really going insane i really enjoyed this and unfortunately we saw an even crazier descent and I don't know. I'm enjoying it. I don't know. You know, like I said, it's a lot like Shane to me. So I don't know where this is headed, but it was pretty crazy. And I, I love the ending. I actually like the beginning as well, where we get introduced to uh, two new characters. Um, I can only remember the guy's name, Hector, because they said it like 18 million times. Because it's like, I don't know who Hector is. Where is Hector? You know, so they kept saying his name. So that's why I remember his name, but I can't remember um, the hotel manager's name. But we get the opening sequence, and it's this random wedding and stuff. And as soon as it started, I was just like, I'm just waiting for this to go bad. I'm curious how it'll play out. And so they have, you know, the theories about the virus and stuff. And so the mother and the father are talking. They're like, okay, we want to leave. We're going to make an announcement. We're going to get our guests out of here. And we want to get to the border before it's closed. We want to make it back home. And then the father ends up having a heart attack during the dance. He bites his daughter's face, which I thought was good CG, where they did like where you could see through her uh cheek and i was like that's gross i always kind of appreciate when they do it like that so she ends up dying and they just lock all the people in there of, of course we find out that they escaped at least 12 of them are left alive so they escaped and it was i want to say it was the it was definitely it was the mother and i i believe it was the brother of the groom or it may have been the groom himself I don't, it may have been both of them actually i think it was both of them and then someone else who was totally random that was in one of those shots that didn't actually say anything so i didn't care about them um but we get introduced to all these characters and we find you know we even find out that some of them are alive because i thought for sure i was like okay they have this opening and i thought it was just going to be an explanation as to where some of the other uh zombies kind of came from because they got surrounded from like this random place outside of the hotel and it's like okay so they also got surrounded by some who were already in the hotel because they were actually like locked in this room and maybe the noise is what finally brought them out but it turns out that that wasn't the case that was just a crazy situation to introduce us to two new characters and then we have the guests who now have control um over the hotel because they've been given the keys uh, by the hotel manager so they're gone i assume that they're going to come back because they took the time to introduce them and we still don't know where ophelia is so who knows what's going on there i thought we'd get some sort of answer but she's still just gone so who knows but um alicia does end up finding both madison and strand 
and she, Hector, and um, the hotel manager, they all take off, which, and this is something that really bugged me when they were running. So, Alicia has the good idea, like, okay, open the door, that way they can't go nuts and, you know, flat out kill us right here, because they're mad at her, and she's the only way I can probably find my mom and, you know, strand. So, she had a good plan, it was like, alright, get behind the door, they won't notice us, they'll go towards, you know, the four people standing right in front of them. Makes a lot of sense, they take off, they run into what I'm pretty sure uh, was like a locker room. And then this is what pissed me off, when they had that scene, they, they lift up this latch that is on the ground, it's like sunken into the ground, you have to use, you have to mentally use your hands to grasp these two handles and lift it up, and they jump down this thing, and then the next scene, they're in the tunnel, and I was just waiting, I was like, I, I know they didn't just leave this thing right open, and then Alicia turns around, and there's a bunch of zombies, and I was like, did they really just leave it open, or, because the way they edited it, to me, is they opened this hatch up, they went down the hatch, and they were so stupid, they just left the hatch open, like, okay, we gotta run, we don't have time for this, when all they would have had to have done was slide it back over, and there's no way those zombies would have got to them, it was a thick metal sheet, you know, with the handles on it, unless they got really smart, these zombies aren't about to start lifting it. Maybe in some crazy random happenstance, one of them could have got its, you know, foot caught in the handle and tripped and lifted it up, maybe, but they, it just seemed like they left it open when they went down there. And like I said, that may not have actually been the case, but it's certainly with the way they edited it, that's exactly what it seemed like. So that made me a little mad. I was like, that's just the stupidest thing ever. There's only three of them. They were clearly way ahead because they had the time to you know, lift it up and, you know, all climb down and stuff, but then they cut to the next scene, and it's a hotel, so of course there's zombies all over the freaking place, but just the way it was cut, I was like, it, it makes it seem like they just left that thing wide open and just took off, like they didn't have the time to just, you know, slide it back over and shut it so that these things couldn't, couldn't possibly get down that hole. But either way, you know, we have them running down the hallway, they get into what I'm pretty sure was, um, I guess like an underground, it was, um, can't think of the staff, like the a staff restroom or something is what it looked like. So they're all in there, and now they're kind of trapped. I assume there's going to be some way out for them. Maybe the um, the other guests, like the other 12 people that are wherever, you know, in the hotel, maybe they'll end up uh, leading them away because they'll be moving around making a bunch of noise now that they have the keys to get to certain locations that they were um, trapped in before. So still a lot of craziness going on, and... Like I said, I'm very excited to get into this next episode, especially the stuff with Travis. And I like how they've been doing the episodes. Like, it was pretty clear how they've been doing them lately, because it started with Nick, and then we got, you know, half of Nick's story, then half of, um, you know, Madison, Alicia, Strand, and Ophelia. And then this episode, we have, you know, half is still their story, and then the other half introduces, you know, Travis and Chris, and now these new people, so the next episode will probably continue their story so you know each you know set of people has a full episode and you know uh nick had the full uh episode and a half kind of story for himself but i enjoyed it i thought it was actually a pretty fun episode uh the thing that really did excite me the most was the stuff with travis and chris because i was curious how this is going to play out with his character and it seems like he is just descending further and further and now he's found people that are just like him like they will kill whoever just to have a ton of supplies, which, you know, Travis clearly points out. He's like, yeah, how do you think they have all of these supplies? Which, of course, he didn't, he still doesn't know exactly about the situation. Because, of course, when Chris went in there, he's like, oh, he saw the picture of the couple. And then he looks over and he hears voices and it's like, oh, that's clearly fresh blood. And so, you know, and plus they, you know, they were like either shot in the head or stabbed in the head. So it's like, obviously, humans did this. So, Travis might find that out fairly soon and then things might really go nuts and we'll see how that plays out but ultimately a really cool episode very um very crazy uh the travis and chris stuff which has me very excited and then you know we got two new characters and now they're all trapped in this restroom so we'll see how all that plays out but i really enjoyed this episode of course definitely want to know what you guys thought about it so please comment below let me know your favorite parts of these favorite parts and of course i have to ask with the ending what where are you at right now as far as Chris's character? Because I'm just like, he can go. And, you know, it's not, obviously it's nothing to the actor. I think he does it well. It's just the character. I'm like, man, he's going, he's like, 
I don't know if it makes it worse or not. He's on some. He's on Shane's level, and he doesn't even have the complexity of what Shane went through. Of I slept with my best friend's wife, and now I want her back. That was like he was just jealous and angry, and it was like I, love makes you crazy sort of thing. I was like, even though he went like obviously way too crazy with it, it was like you can at least slightly understand it. And then with Chris, it's just like I kind of just want to kill people. They get on my nerves. You know, that's pretty much it. Just I'm gonna kill you. I'm gonna kill this person. You know, I you know she's my sister, but she we argued, so I'm gonna definitely kill her or let her be killed. So he's reaching like some Shane levels, and he's really got nothing. He's had no real issues. He's just kind of lost it, and that's just who he is. He just kind of wants to, you know, be in that sort of violence and stuff. And that could be okay if you're just like you know just killing off zombies left and right. But he's like whatever. I'll kill this person. You know. He'd rather kill this innocent father who was defending himself or, you know, kind of lost it for a minute when this dude is, like, killing his livelihood. And he'd rather kill this guy off for some people he laughed and joked with than, like, try to be under an understanding human being and say, hey, we should probably leave, like my dad is saying, because this is his land. Like, if it was empty, that's one thing. But we find out that there's actually someone, you know, still around, so... It's a crazy situation, but like I said, it's so crazy. I wouldn't mind if he got killed off or if something else crazy happened to him. Maybe if he got like an arm or something chopped off, he'd understand how crazy things really are. But I don't know. Like I said, I would love to know uh, where you guys sit with Chris as far as, you know, that ending. And of course, I, I want to know what you guys thought about this episode in general. So please comment below, let me know, and thanks for watching.